Rise Above at Tammy Lynn. I'm Tammy Lynn, and I'm honored to have this opportunity to speak into your life, to empower and encourage you to continue running your race, fighting that good fight of faith, and finishing strong in Jesus' name. Family, I'm here with the Roar Restore for Kingdom Marriages and Families. The Lion of Judah is Roar Restore over you, your marriage, and your family. I'm here to encourage you today and to help strengthen your faith and to keep you standing tall and firm in the Lord and pressing towards your higher calling, pressing towards your prize, your prize, which is the restoration of your marriage and of your family. Before I go into this word uh, to encourage you all, let us pray. Father God, we come before you and we lift up your holy name. We magnify your holy name. We exalt your holy name. Father, I thank you that you are in our midst right now. And I thank you, Father God, for all that you've done for all of your people, all that you are doing right now and all that you are about to do. We give you thanks in advance, Father God, knowing that you are working all things out for our good and for your glory. Father, I thank you for my brothers and my sisters in Christ. I thank you, Father God, that they have ears to hear you father god and when i open my mouth you will fill my mouth with thy words and you will cause your words to fall upon the ears of those who you want to hear this message i plead the blood of jesus over my brothers and sisters in christ i plead the blood of jesus over myself and i decree that no weapon formed against any of us shall prosper now holy spirit speak have your way and father god be glorified in jesus name amen so family back in february it was actually on February the 16th. I was sitting out on my patio, and as many of you know, as you're getting to know me, whenever I have my coffee with Jesus in the morning, um, he's always speaking about something. On this one particular morning, um, he spoke to me through one of my trees in my backyard. And in this one particular tree, months earlier, there was this woodpecker that uh, was constantly coming and was just pecking at this tree. Well, I noticed on um, this particular morning, there were many different areas on this tree where this um, woodpecker was pecking at this tree. Um, it's kind of funny because I, I go back to when he had a conversation with the Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1, and he said, Jeremiah, what do you see? And Jeremiah said, I see the rod of an almond tree. And the Lord says, you see well, I'm watching over my words. Because um, it was like the Lord had asked me, what do you see? Well, what I saw was a kingdom stander. This tree is very tall. It's the tallest of all the other trees in, in my backyard. And when I look at it, I just see this kingdom stander. And I see how the enemy is just pecking at their mind and pecking at their heart. So like he said, you had seen well. Ever since February the 16th, every time I look at this tree now, all the other trees in my backyard are trees. But when I look at this one particular tree, I think of a kingdom standard. I think of y'all all the time. I can't get away from y'all. I mean, this is, uh, this is my ministry. This is my Roar Restore. Um, but I, I definitely um, think of you all when I see this one particular tree and see all those areas where this woodpecker had um, pecked at this tree. You know, to peck means to strike, to bite. Well, the Lord has just put you all so heavy on my heart because he is seeing the enemy peck at you. He is seeing the enemy trying his last attempts to try to get you to stop standing, to try to get you out of a position of faith. He has been pecking at you to get your faith, your hope, and your confidence. He has been pecking at you to try to get you confused as to if you heard the Lord correctly. He has been pecking at you trying to get you offended at the very one that you are standing for. He has been pecking at you just bringing these lies to try to discourage you. He has been pecking at you because he wants you to get out of faith and into unforgiveness and bitterness. And when you are in faith, then you can pray for that one that the Lord promised you that he was going to restore back to him and then restore back to you. Because being in a position of faith, you're not believing for that one who abandoned you or walked out on you, that one who got into stupidity, who chose to go live in nonsense, 
who chose to disrespect you, dishonor you, ignore you, block you, delete you, all that. When you're standing in faith, you're not focused on that, who that was. You're focused on the one that the Lord is bringing back to you. And the one that he is bringing back to you is the one that he's restoring back to him. And this encounter that they have with him is going to change them. So that when they come back to you, then this time it would be forever. This time, the negative cycle would not continue. The cycle of addiction, the cycle of infidelity, the cycle of abandonment, those cycles, those negative cycles that was once in your marriage that once used to shake you, that once used to shake your marriage, that once used to shake your family. If you have a child that has been battling an addiction, addictions can shake a family. They shake families. They can shake a mama. They can shake a father. And so that addiction at one point used to shake you all, all the time. And it would affect everybody. Well, the Lord is bringing them out of that addiction. Bringing them back to him. So when he returns them to you, well, that addiction will no longer remain. Because he's removing everything with, within his people that, that is no longer of any good. So that which remains is a good thing. So they're going to come back a good thing, bringing good things, so that together you are all more beneficial to one another. And we see that in Philmon. So that perhaps they went away for a little while, so that when they return, this time it was forever, that was beneficial to you, you was beneficial to them, y'all was beneficial for kingdom, because ultimately this is all about a kingdom purpose. That is why the enemy attacked in the first place. It wasn't just about you. It wasn't just about your spouse or it just wasn't about your child or your family member. It was about the purpose of your connection. The Spirit of God brought you together, you and your spouse together. And that was a threat to the enemy because of the purpose in the union. Your connection to your child, to your children, that is a divine connection and that is a kingdom purpose. And you're to be a leader in their life. And you're to be a reflection of Christ in their life. And they're called to be disciples for Christ. So it's all about the kingdom purpose that the enemy's been after. So his strategy has been to try to take one or both or all. If he can have the whole family and just get everybody just hating everybody, getting everybody turning away from God, then everybody's turned away from their purpose. Everybody's turned away from, from their higher calling. Are you hearing me? So the enemy just packs because he wants to get you out of position and he wants to get you offended. Because when you become offended and get into a position of unforgiveness, then that one you've been praying for becomes your enemy. And the enemy wants you to forget that you have one enemy. Because then if you start seeing them as your enemy... Because you're, you're remembering all they did to you because the enemy's whispering in your ear, pecking at you, pecking at you, pecking at you. Remember what they did? Remember when they walked out on you? Remember when they betrayed you? Remember when they cheated on you? Remember, 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 remember? Well, we know that in 1 Corinthians 13, love holds no records of wrong. He doesn't want you in a position of faith and love. And being in faith and love is being in a position of obedience. And obedience is what brings the release. So if you're not in faith, love, and obedience, then guess what? That restoration just had an alteration. Because we see in Daniel 7, 25 through 27, where the enemy comes to try to wear the saints out. He comes and pecks and pecks and pecks. Why? Because he's trying to alter the season. And the enemy knows that it is a time of judgment. And he knows that he cannot stop the promise of God. But if he can stop you, then that's where it stops. So he wants to get you out of faith. He wants to get you out of love. He wants you to get out of obedience. Because again, obedience brings the release. And we are blessed by our obedience. The enemy knows all this. And he's very, very strategic. And he's been very, very strategic. That's why the Lord has made it very clear that you're not wrestling with flesh and blood. You are wrestling with principalities. So your spouse, they're not your problem. 
Your child, your children, your family members, they're not your problem. It is that principality operating in and through them that is your problem. And that principality is trying to get to you. Because it wants your hope, your faith, and your confidence. It wants your peace. It wants your joy. And when you come to that moment of realizing that the enemy's already stolen off, I mean, the spouse is gone, the child's gone, the family members won't talk to you. When you come to that point of realizing and how much he's already stole, then you begin to like put them shoulders back, stand tall like this tree in my backyard and say, oh no, no more. You're roaring restore and you're roaring no more. You're not going to get any more from me, devil. You're not going to get my peace. You're not going to get my joy. You're not going to get my hope. You're not going to get my faith. You're not going to get my confidence. You may have taken my spouse, but you know what? Some of y'all are going to be thanking the devil for what for what he did because God is getting hold of that spouse out yonder in that pig pen. And he's making them a whole new man, a whole new woman. So again, when they come back to you, they're actually more useful to you. And you're going to feel stronger and even more confident around them. Because when God restores, he restores it much better than what it ever was before. And he, God's restoration is means that he's restoring it back to what he wanted it to be all along, which was the two of you to be a reflection of a relationship with him. Amen. So we're going to look at um, a few verses that he has given just to encourage you all because he sees you. He sees the spiritual warfare. He sees how hell is contending against the fulfillment of this uh, promise. And the enemy knows that if he can get you in this position of unforgiveness, in this position of bitterness, then he knows that he has the power, because we see this in the Prince of Persia, okay? The Lord, I mean, when you, I'm not going to all the details of Daniel and Daniel 10, but you know when he prayed, the answer, his prayer was heard, the answer was formed, there was a delay, okay? And then there was the Prince of Persia. And what the Lord is wanting you to know about that with the Prince of Persia is because there is a roar, a, a, a war, W-A-R, in the spirit realm. Okay, so the enemy, again, is doing everything possible to keep you from stepping into the fulfillment of that promise. So there are principalities that are operating. And whenever we get into sin and disobedience, we get the enemy room to have power in our life. And so the Lord is just wanting to encourage you all to continue to stand, to continue to stand firm and to stand tall. And we'll look at these scriptures and you'll know the rest because he's saying... You need to be alert, and it's time to be alert, and it's time to recognize what time it is, and it's time to make sure that you don't get yourself in some position that alters your season. Do you hear me? So the first one we're going to look at is 1 Peter um, 5, 8 through 9. Now, I released a word the other day on this, and the Holy Spirit is really speaking out of uh, the message version because ultimately the Lord is saying, no, he He has the final, final say. Um, but today he's wanting to specifically talk to you, the kingdom stander, who you're standing for the restoration of your marriage. You're standing for the restoration of your family. And so this is what he's saying. Be a sober spirit. Be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. But resist him. Firm, firm. In your faith, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished by your brethren who are in the world. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Ultimately, God has the last word. Hallelujah. But he is needing you to stand firm. Excuse me. <clears throat> I woke up this morning, y'all, and I didn't even have like a voice. So the devil was trying to stop me this morning. Um, sister girl struggling, trust me. But he's wanting you to stand firm in your faith. And he is wanting you to be alert because the enemy is pecking. And he wants to get you offended. He wants to get you to give up. And if you get offended, you begin to speak things that contradict and create a hindrance to the fulfillment of the promise. You're wanting a restoration? 
but then you're offended and you begin to tell your spouse or your child or your children something that contradicts what God is saying. And God is saying to remain in love, to live a life above reproach. He, he says in his word that if you believe in your heart and do not doubt that this mountain, you know, can be removed, then it will be. But he also goes to say, but if you have any and forgiveness in your heart towards anyone, then you need to forgive. Okay? That means if you believe, that's great. But hey, before that mountain though, before, before that mountain comes down, you need to deal with that forgiveness. So before that restoration happens, you need to deal with that unforgiveness if you are still struggling with that. And forgiveness is a choice, family. It doesn't mean that what they did was okay. It just means you're okay. And it just means you are not going to be a prisoner to that pain anymore. You're not going to be a, a prisoner to their decision anymore. It just means you're going to let go and you're going to let God. Because you can't stay in that pain and embrace restoration. He says, forget what lies behind and press towards the prize, your higher calling in Christ Jesus. What is the prize? The restoration of your marriage. The restoration of your family. So the enemy just wants to peck at you and peck at you because he doesn't want you focused on the restoration. He wants you to focus on what they did to you. And again, when you begin to focus on what they did to you and then you get in bitterness and unforgiveness, well, the next thing you know, they are your enemy and you're forgetting you have one enemy. And that one enemy is the one that came into that relationship, into that marriage, into your family in the first place and brought that division, brought that divorce, brought that in, infidel, infidelity, doing everything those gosh darn principalities could do to tear your marriage and your family apart. So that together you were not a reflection of a relationship with Christ Jesus and that together you were all not feeling your king, fulfilling your kingdom purpose. The enemy was very, very strategic. I know you didn't see that on the day that you said, I do. I know you didn't see that on the day that you birthed them. I know you didn't see it coming. But the Lord even says, if you would have saw it coming, oh, then you would have had your house locked up real good. You would have had it guarded good. You would have been on alert. Okay, but you weren't then. But now it's time to be on alert. Because it is time. It is your due season for the fulfillment of that promise. And the enemy wants to try once again to alter your season. And so you need to be in faith. Because he says, according to your faith, it's done. And he also says in, in Luke, regarding the persistent widow woman, who was very persistent. Okay? And she was determined to get her way. Hopefully you are very determined to get your restoration. That you are more determined to get the restoration. That you are focused on the prize versus what is going on over here. She wasn't focused on the fact that this judge who, who didn't even believe in God and kept telling her no. She didn't, you, we don't read about how she was like, well, should I? Should I go back? Should I not? No. We see what the Lord wants us to see. He wants us to be persistent. He wants you to be persistent. He doesn't want you to be moved by what's what's back there, what they're saying, what they're doing, what they're not saying, what they're not doing. He doesn't want you to be moved all that. He wants you to be persistent and to remain in faith and focus on the restoration. And when you're focused on the restoration, that means you're focused on Christ. You're focused on your relationship with Christ. And when you are in that position, then you are also ensuring that your soul is restored. And some of you, your soul has been restored and you are in forgiveness. You can now think of what they did and it no longer like bring you to your knees in pain. You feel more excited about the restoration that is coming than, than, than the pain that you once felt. Because God has turned it all around for your good. Some of you, you need to get there. He's saying you need to get there. Because the, this area within you that is still so wounded about what they did is where the enemy's really just getting to you and he's pecking at you and he's pecking at you and reminding you of the abandonment and reminding you of the betrayal. Reminding you of how they dishonored you. And when he's reminding you and then you get into that conversation and entertaining it, then that becomes your reality. And again, you start looking at them as they're your enemy. The enemy had a conversation with Eve in the garden 
She pondered that conversation one too many times. That conversation became her reality. She acted on her reality. If you are not careful, the enemy, when he is bringing you these lies, and again, he, he roams around like a roaring lion. So you have the roaring lion. He's roaring restore over you. But then you have this one that is trying to be a pretender. He's a con artist. He's scandalous. He's deceiving. He's manipulating. And he tries to come and, and just peck at you and peck at you. And the next thing you know, all you see is somebody who abandoned you. All you see is someone who cheated on you. All you see is someone who disgraced you, dishonored you, lied to you, yada, yada, yada. You begin to see that. And when you begin to see all that, you begin to lose interest on standing. When you are focused on all that, you are not standing firm. And that's what I see every time I look at this tree now in my backyard. I see a kingdom stander standing firm. But yet somebody who the enemy is, is just pecking. And he's been pecking at you. And he'll continue to peck because he doesn't want this fulfillment coming. He doesn't want your marriage restored. He doesn't want your family restored because there's a kingdom purpose in it. The kingdom purpose is more of a threat to him than what you are. And his only option to stop the kingdom purpose and stop the fulfillment is to take you out. So the Lord says, be alert. You need to be very alert right now. And you need to identify the season. And you need to identify why these little pecking thoughts are coming at you. When one minute you're standing firm and you're excited about the restoration and you're feeling really hopeful. But then the next minute these pecking thoughts come to you. And then they get your emotions going. And then they get you in a place of bitterness. And they get you in a place of being offended. And they get you back in a place of pain. And it just wears you out. It's a battle trying to wear you out. Daniel 7, 25 through 27, the enemy comes to try to wear the people of God out. To try to alter the season. But we know that there's a judgment. And we know that what he took and has been in his hands has to be placed back in the hands of God's people. He knows this. But again, you're the target. But it's not just because if he, if he just stops you, then hey, he wins. No, the big win for him is to stop the kingdom purpose in your marriage. The kingdom purpose in your family. And many of you, you are the only one that is even praying for that spouse who's gone astray. You are the only one praying for that child. You are the only one praying for that family member. So, of course, the course the enemy's coming after you. Because you're the only one that even cares about their salvation. You're the only one that is desiring uh, deeply for them to be restored back to the Father. And that desire has continued to compel you to intercede and to go to war for them. The enemy doesn't like you because you're standing for something bigger than you. You're standing for a kingdom purpose. Whether that's the restoration of your marriage, the salvation of a loved one, the deliverance of a loved one, whatever it may be, there's a kingdom purpose in it. Deliverance, restoration, salvation, resurrection, and that is what he's after. The last one we're going to look at is um, Ephesians 6, um, 10 through 14. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God. Got to start right there. The full armor of God, people. Okay? Right here. This is your weapon and this is what you need. God will use a YouTube ministry channel to use a mouthpiece to speak to you, to confirm some things. But ultimately, this right here, God is watching over his word. And you better make sure when you are listening to someone else that they are speaking the word of God because it's his word that he's watching over. Do you follow me? You don't want some sugar-coated word that somebody is using for subscribers or Venmo or Cash App or whatever. You don't want that. You want the word of God that he is watching over. And you want his word to be your daily armor so that you can stand and you can stand firm. So that when the enemy comes and pecks, 
and he tries to remind you of what was, you can be like, oh, I'm forward focused. <laughs> I'm getting my restoration. I'm getting my marriage back. I'm getting my family back. You don't even have time. You don't even want to entertain what once happened, what went down in the past. Because you are future focused. Are you hearing me? And you can only remain future focused and in faith when you are standing firm on the word of God. Come on, let's keep going. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. So you will be able to stand firm against the pecks of the devil. Are you hearing me, family? Again, when he tries to come at you to get you offended. To take your faith, your hope, your confidence, your peace, your joy. To get you out of standing for your marriage, standing for your family. To get you offended at them, trying to convince you that they're the real enemy. When he's pecking at you, you can stand. And it says, stand firm. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of the darkness against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist the devil or res resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand, stand firm. So when the enemy's pecking at you, you can remain standing firm because you know that you know that you know what the Lord told you. You know that you know that you know what he's going to do for you. You know that he is a promise maker and he is a promise keeper. You are wiser than the enemy now because you know that the only reason why he would even peck at you, trying to get you offended, trying to get you in unforgiveness, trying to get you out of faith, trying to get you out of obedience, is because he is after the kingdom purpose of it all. And when you realize that, it gives you strength to stand and to fight. Because you're fighting for something bigger than yourself. You're fighting for the salvation of a loved one. You're fighting for your marriage, for your family. You're fighting for the generations to come. Amen? So family, you have got to be alert right now. Because all over, I mean, there is just a lot of people are in major warfares right now. And it's principalities. But the enemy wants to trip you up. And again, to get you to think that they're your enemy. And he wants you focused on what they're doing over yonder. He wants you focused and fixated on, I haven't heard from them. They haven't contacted me. This, that, that. That gets you focused on an individual. You've got to realize there's principalities. And these principalities are operating in the spirit realm to try to stop the fulfillment of this promise. And again, to stop it, it must stop you. Because the enemy knows he can't stop God. He can't. He can't stop the promises of God. But he can stop God's people. And that's why God has been very faithful to you all to tell you, hey, hey, stay in there. The enemy's trying to wear you out. I, 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 know, I know that it's a struggle. I know that the battle is fierce. But hey, I, I not only gave you that promise made you that promise, but I'm going to keep that promise. The Lord has made it very clear to you all that it is his will that the one who went astray should not perish. He's made it very clear to you that the one who went astray matters to him. He's been very, very faithful. Well, the enemy's been very, very consistent because he knows God is a faithful, faithful God. And he knows that it's according to your faith that it shall be done. So hold on to your faith. Stand firm on the word of God, family. Continue to fight the good fight of faith. And I will talk to you all soon. Shalom.